Remember, these guys live in their own dimension. Uh, try to imagine life from the perspective of a logarithm, given the rules of exponents, which I'm going to write again. X to the A times X to the B equals X to the A plus B. These are the rules for exponents. X to the A over X to the B equals X to the A minus B. And X to the A raised to the B equals more room. X to the A times B. And you mean there's more? Yeah. Okay. A base raised to the one power is just the base. And a base raised to the zero power is one. Now that's looking at everything from the point of view of the base, because that's the way we're used to thinking. These are this right here. That's the arithmetic of exponents. Or the properties of exponents. So now, jump up to the exponent level and try to change your perspective. I know it's really hard. I do it imperfectly. We're going to jump into the arithmetic arithmetic of logarithms. OK. Problem one in your homework. Try to make it bigger here. Your first problem. All right, let's talk about the rule of logarithms that goes with this problem. When you have the logarithm to any base, now that means we're also talking about log base 10 and we're talking about the LN. Any log to any base of an argument that consists of two things that are being multiplied will equal the log to that base of the first thing, for lack of a better word, plus the log to any base of the second thing. Now by thing, I mean a number or a variable. Okay, so for instance, the log to base three of four X would be log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3. Am I about to run out of room? Yes, isn't that wonderful? Of X. Darn it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
x there. So it's the same idea. So now the problem in the homework is log base six of 31 times 22. And all they want you to do is not calculate that, just rewrite it using the arithmetic of logarithms. Log base six of 31 plus log base six of 22. Okay, now, number two gives us the flip side. All right, if log base B of A times C equals log base B of A plus log base B of B, it's got to be true that log to any base of A plus log to any base of C equals log to any base of A times C. Okay, I'm recording. Making sure, totally paranoid about it now. All right, so the second problem in your homework is log base B. That means to any base. Log base B of 59 plus log base B of 64. What does that equal? Well, how about log base B of 59 times 64? Yes, and there are the answers only this time with no warning, they actually want you to multiply. But notice for the first one, log base 6 of 31 times 22 is log base 6 of 31 plus log base 6 of 22. Okay, that's why I have to uh, have the answers here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so they want you to multiply 59 times 64. Fine. That's what they want. Equals log base B of three seven seven six. How poetic. When there's only one number or one term, they don't use parentheses. I object, but, oh well. Number three. That was the first rule. This property of logarithms is called the product rule. So what I'm gonna do here is write it out here and you'll see this. Um, the property is the product rule. In math, the word product means multiplication.
let's just say multiply for the sake of room. Okay. Now rule two, property two, uh, they're not numbered. Okay, this is called um, the power rule. Sounds exciting. You too can have more power. All right, watch this. Log to any base of a number raised to a power. equals, I've got to put parentheses. Mr. Stewart scared it into me. That power, watch what happens. C times log base B of A. So here's your homework problem log capital B. It's the way they're writing it, so you have to write it that way. Lowercase r raised to the negative three power equals negative three times log base capital B of lowercase R. Let's do another example. How about log base five to three squared? equals two times log base five of three. Same deal, but notice the number you bring down can be negative, no problem. The power goes down in front. Now we've got the quotient rule. Quotient means divide. But I'll write that out. The word quotient, that's why I'm putting um, um, quotation marks around it. The word quotient means divide. Okay, so here's the rule and I'll follow it with the homework problem. Log base B, log to any base, of A over C equals log base B of A minus log base B of C. That's the quotient rule. Now over here we have log base B. Here's your homework problem, log base B. This is number four, by the way. Log base B of P over 10 is going to be log base B 
of P, they don't use parentheses, I do, minus log base B of 10. That's it. That's the quotient rule. And there's the answer. My notes are going to be attached to the back, so you're going to have this paper and this paper to look at. Now it gets hard, kids. And then they hit you with another easy one. My goodness. Let's come back to this. Let's come back to number five and leave it kind of basic for a little while. Okay, number six, we'll come back to five. I'll even put a note, come back to five. All right, this is number six. Log base nine of 27 times 22 equals log base nine of 27 plus, because you're multiplying, log base nine of 22. We all have to live through it. My first reaction when I was a student was, I can't do that. Yeah, that's what I always thought. But then I did. So if I can do it, you can do it. Here we go, log base two of 13z. Well, that's 13 times z. So you're gonna use the product rule again. Log base two of 13 plus log base two of z. Ta-da! Right there. And here we have an LN problem, number eight. You've got to remember, and it's hard to do it first, LN is just another log. It's just written funny, as if logs weren't written funny. Okay, the LN of BC, that's B times C, equals the LN of B. times the ln of c. That's the way I would write it. Let's see. Ah, oh, they got me. Plus, plus. Plus. The ln of b plus the ln of c. And here they're throwing all the other rules at you. All right, now we're switching to the product rule, uh, uh, power rule. Number nine. log of c to the 14, which I would normally put parentheses around. What is the base? It's 10, it's not particularly important here. 
Um, you take 14, bring it down in front. 14 times the log of C. That's it. That's the power rule. Number 10. Again, power rule. Log base P of S, it's a, a lowercase s. You have to use the same case they use. This is a capital P, this is a lowercase s to the negative two equals negative two times log base capital P of lowercase s. Okay. And number 11, the quotient rule. See, these are just basic log of m over n equals the log of m can't do this minus the log of n seems so wrong to not use parentheses Well, that's not very exciting. The difference between the minus and the plus. When you're multiplying two things inside the argument, they become separate plus problems. When you're dividing stuff inside the argument, <gasps> becomes log of one log of the top argument minus the log of the bottom argument. Well, the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator there. And we have the LN number 12. of S over T, both lowercase. That's going to be the ln of S minus the ln of T. And no, they don't use parentheses. I just can't stand not using parentheses. Seems so wrong. All right, now let's look at 14. 15, 16, 17, 18. Now that we've done the basic stuff, let's go back to number five. Number five. We've got log base B of the seventh root of X to the third over Y to the seventh times Z to the nine. Okay, you got to go slow and go one step at a time. This is log base B of X to the third <clears throat> over Y to the seventh times c to the 9 
raised to the one seventh power. Remember, that's how you translate a radical expression. This is equivalent. Only now we're dealing with logs, so this permits us to take that one seventh down in front. So this is going to be one seventh times log base B of X to the third over Y to the seventh times C to the ninth. Make sure I copied everything correctly to this point. Yes. I guess I should move that up because I don't want anybody getting confused. Okay. Now, that's where we are. This is our reality now. You have a quotient inside the argument, so we're going to use the quotient rule now. Only one seventh is multiplying all of it. So I'm going to put brackets here. This will be one seventh bracket log base B of x to the third minus log base b of y to the seventh times c to the ninth. So this is going to be one seventh times log base B. I am going to bring that down, but I'm going to wait, wait for a minute to do it. It's not wrong if I were to do it now. Minus. We've got to use the product rule, but this is minus the whole thing. So, I'm going to do something you almost never have to do. And that is, I'm going to use braces around the outside because I'm going to use brackets on the inside. Okay, I close my bracket. And I close my brace. Remember this from pre-algebra, beginning algebra? Um, you would have learned about braces and brackets and parentheses used like this, probably when you were doing order of operations problems. Many eons ago, Okay, now, this is minus this. So I distribute the minus sign here and here. All right. 
one seventh times log base B of X to the third minus log base B of Y to the seventh Negative times positive is negative, log base B times C to the ninth. And now I don't have any brackets on the inside, so I can get rid of that brace and put a bracket there. All right, now, whew, I've got, yes. Couldn't we also break it down further into um, uh, like three log B uh, X? Yes, yes, I, I had explained that I wanted to um, wait, and here's what I want to wait for. I want to do it all at once to each different term. Gotcha. Sorry about that. No, no problem at all. You could have done it earlier. Nothing wrong. One seventh. Yes, now we're going to use, in fact, I should go back up here and write from the beginning. Here we're using the power rule. Here we're using the quotient rule. Here we're using the product rule. Now we're using the power rule again. This is just distri distribution. Call it distrib. Now we're going to use the power rule again. Power rule. Three. Log base B of X minus seven log base B of Y. I'm just looking at the answer, it's interesting. Minus nine log base B of Z bracket. Right now I'm about to distribute this one seventh to here to here and to here. So this is going to be just distribution again, distrib. One seventh times three log base B of X minus one seventh times seven log base B of Y minus one seventh times nine log base B of Z. And now finally, we put it all together. It's gonna be three sevenths log base B 
of x minus 1 7th times 7 is 1. So this is just log base b of y minus 9 over 7 log base b of c. I'm going to compare my answer to theirs. Except for the fact that they don't use parentheses around the arguments. It's great. Yes, this is the answer. So I guess you would call this simplifying. So let me um, And there are shortcuts. The better you get at this, the more you can combine steps, but you have to be very careful. I suppose it would have been better to put power roll here too. If I were you, I'd go over the, for most of you, I would go over this step by step and actually copy it and reason through why each step is being taken. And you can even have the rules beside you on flashcards. I mean, that's a good way to learn. Okay, we move on. Here we go, number 13. Lucky number 13. Move back a little bit there. All right. So here we've got number 13. We're going to take the log. Of X squared minus X minus 20 minus the log of x squared minus 16. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the quotient rule. So that we'll have log of x squared minus x minus 20 over x squared minus 16. Then I'm just going to factor. log, and you know it's log base 10. You don't need it. You don't need the 10 there, but I'm just reminding you, helping you remember. All right, boom, 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 x, x, 
4 times 5, so min minus 5 times plus 4. Over the difference of two squares, then I'm going to cancel, old fashioned canceling. The X plus fours cancel. And so your answer is kind of quick and easy. X minus five over X minus four. Let's see if my math lab agrees. Lucky number 13. Yep. Okay, this one is multiple choice. Take a look at that. Ugh. Don't even stop and think about it. Go one step at a time. I think I can fit them both on one page. Shall we try? Okay. So log base B, and here's the argument, P to the fourth times Q to the sixth over M to the fifth, or fifth power, yeah, B to the eighth. Make sure I've got it right. Q, M, B. So I'm not going to be able to cancel anything. All right, this is number 14. All right, we're going to use the quotient rule. We'll have log base B, P to the fourth times Q to the sixth, minus log base B, of M to the fifth times B to the eighth. Okay, now we're going to use the product rule because I have that multiplied by that and that multiplied by that. But you have to be very, very careful. This is going to be log base B of M to the fifth plus log base B of b to the eighth, but I'm going to put brackets around it because that multiplication sign applies to everything in here. So we're going to have log base b of p to the fourth. No, it's not a capital. of P to the fourth plus log base B of Q to the sixth minus bracket log base B of M to the fifth. Can't stand that. I'm obsessed, I have to do it. Okay, plus log base B 
of B to the eighth. Ooh. Now, at this point, you can wait to do the magic on this one or not. I'm going to wait until I distribute the minus sign, just because I like to go in a very orderly way. So now I'm just going to distribute. We'll have log base B of P to the fourth plus log base B of Q to the sixth minus log base B of M to the fifth minus, now let's stop and think. Maybe we could do the magic step here. Whenever this number and this number are the same, the answer is the exponent. So I am just going to put an 8 here. So there, cogitate on that for a minute. Okay, now we're going to use the power rule. All right, bring down the four, bring down the six, bring down the five. Okay, four times log base B of P plus six times log base B of Q. That's a Q, not a nine. Minus five times log base B of M minus eight. Now let's see what my math lab says. Yes, this is your answer right there. No, it's not. Four log bit. Here it is up here. Four log base B of P plus six log base B of Q minus five log base B of M, minus eight. Be careful. Look at how they're trying to trick you. Some of these are so close to being the right answer. So you've got to actually work it out yourself. Just guessing, I don't believe is going to work here. I'm sure I'm I should sure know I should this, know this, but... but... Up where, Up where we did where log, we did log of, of B, M to M the fifth, to the minus, fifth eight. minus eight. Why did Why we did get we minus get eight? eight? Oh, very good. No, you shouldn't know it. I mean, I should know it, but you're just learning it. Whenever this number and that number, here it's a letter, so whenever this letter and this letter are the same, you write down just the exponent. Okay, thank or, you. Or thank let you. me prove it to you. I'm glad you asked. I was going to ask that same question. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Log base B. Here's the rule, and then we'll put numbers to it. Log base B of B to the C. How about that? Is going to equal C times log base B 
of B to the one. Now that's really not necessary. Um, a rule, okay, log base B of B is, uh, 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 what are you doing? There. Log base B of B is one. So this is gonna be C times one, which is C. So now if we apply numbers to this, let's say we have log base three of three to the two. That's going to be two times log base three of three. All right, now, Log base three of three is one. So you have two times one. So the answer is two. Which means that you can save these steps if you want to and just say, oh great, the three matches the three. So the answer is two. There's another way to prove it. Log base B of B to the C. Okay, equals C times log base B of B. Now this is the base. This is the argument. So, if you come down here real fast and say log base B of B, where that's the base, and this is the argument, to turn this into an equation, let's say X. Well, this is always gonna be the exponent. So you have to ask yourself, okay, B equals this B, the base, raised to the exponent, B to what power is going to equal B? Well, the only answer is 1. B equals B to the 1, right? So 1 is what X equals. X can only be 1. That's a better proof. So, yes, since x equals 1, all right, we have just shown that log base b of b equals 1. So this equals 1, so you'll have c times 1, which is c. Or you can just believe it. Those are the two best ways I have to show it to you. Here I'm asking you to take on faith that log base three of three is one. Here I'm proving to you that log to any base of that base will give you definitely the answer one because this has to be the exponent that that base is raised to to give you that number and they're the same best i can do for you so just memorize it look <clears throat> 
log to any base of the base to the one is one. Log to any base of that same base raised to a power is the power. What does that mean? That means that the ln of E equals one. How do I know that? Because ln is log base E. So log base E of E to the one power is one. And how about log, log of 10? That equals one. How do I know? Because the base is 10. When these two numbers are the same, the answer is one. On the other hand, if we're asking about log of 10 to the third, the answer is three. Because the 10 and the 10 are the same, so the answer is the exponent. It's pretty cool. Okay, we have to move on. Thank you for going over that. My pleasure. Really seriously, my pleasure. We can call it a little background. Okay, we've got plenty of time to finish this. Um, next problem is 15. Number 15. The ln of 2 over 3x to the third y equals the ln of 2 minus the ln of 3x to the third y. So that's going to be the ln of 2 minus, now I need brackets, we'll have the ln of 3 plus the ln of x to the third, and you can go ahead and skip a step here and bring your 3 down in front if you want to plus the ln of y, okay, so we're going to have the ln of 2 minus the ln of 3 minus the ln uh, of x to the third, but I am going to bring the 3 down now plus the ln of y, and that should be the answer. Let's see. The ln of 2 minus the ln of 3 minus 3 ln x plus ln y. Yes. So, yeah, we're going to distribute there and there. Okay, and number 16. We're going to have the log. of the square root of b raised to the sixth power plus c. So, no, it's times. 
silly goose. Yeah, that's good enough. Times C. Now we could go ahead and find this immediately, but why add to the steps? Let's just be very careful and go one step at a time. So this is going to be the log of b to the sixth times c to the one half power, which is going to be one half times the log of b to the sixth times C. This is a baby version of that longer problem we did. OK, I'm about to use the product rule on this. This one half is going to apply to all of it, and my last step is going to be um, distributing the one half or my almost last step. So we'll put a bracket here and here. We'll have one half log b to the sixth plus log c. And we can have one half six log b plus log C. All right, I want to be able to kind of hone in. I punched the wrong thing. There. OK, so now I'm going to distribute the one half. So our final answer, well, our almost final answer, our penultimate answer. OK, our almost final answer is 1 half times 6 log B plus 1 half log C. 1 half times 6 is 3. So our final answer is 3 log B plus 1 half times log C. And I need to add more pages. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Oh, why does it do that? There's our final answer. Three log B plus one half log C. Yes. Now, tricky buzzards, there are two problems here where we're being given the long version of the problem and we're being asked to squish it together into one logarithm by using the kind of reverse of the way the rules are usually written. Hmm, number 17. This was number 16. I don't know if I wrote number 16. Fifteen, sixteen. I did good. OK. So this is number 17 and then I'll scroll up. Hmm. 
Okay, so here's the question. One half log C. Well, all right. Log C plus seven log D. Okay, I'm going to use the quotient rule. No, I'm not. I'm going to use the, the power rule. Kind of in reverse. Not really, but it's the way you get to think of it. This will be log C to the one half power plus log D to the seventh power. That's my first step. Then I'm going to use the product rule. You can't use the product rule until you have log argument, log argument. You can't have anything in front. So you've got to pull these guys back up. There's the product rule. Okay, this is going to be log. Square root of C times D to the seventh. Now this is correct, but the correct form is to take whatever is not under the radical and put it in front when you have a radical expression multiplied by another expression. So our final answer is log d to the seventh times the square root of c. And that indeed is what they have, and they actually use parentheses this time. Imagine that. And then finally, number 18. We start out with the ln of x to the third minus six times the ln of the sixth root of the square root of x. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well, I have to move this six up here into the exponent position. The ln of x to the third minus the ln of the sixth root of x to the sixth power, or probably What's about to happen would be more clear if I change this to x to the one sixth power. And then when this six comes up, that's what we have. And then one sixth times six is one. So this is going to be ln to the third minus ln of x there. The ln of x to the third minus the ln of x, and we know that that's an invisible one. Now we're going to use the quotient rule. Let's see, this, we use the power rule here, power. Now quotient. We'll have the ln of x to the third over x to the one. That'll be the ln 
of x to the 3 minus 1, which will be the ln of x squared. And we're supposed to be compacting it, so I'm not going to bring that 2 down in front. I'm going to leave it there all nice and compacted. You can also do that. Now this is the quotient rule of exponents inside the parentheses. If I stop making extra marks there. This is it.